You've tuned in to the Beyond Hope podcast, your access to success strategies and more to help you survive and thrive through your loved one's addiction challenges while you move onward and upward with your life. Now, here's your host, Shar Jones. Hey everyone, this is Shar, and welcome back to Beyond Hope Radio. How's it going? I just wanted to let you know that you are on my mind. I'm thinking of all my moms out there who are just trying to figure this all out, figuring out how to love and support our kids while holding healthy boundaries for ourselves and while allowing them to make mistakes while also making sure that they have the tools that they need to make good choices for themselves and to be safe. And it's just not that easy. A lot has happened since I last recorded when you love somebody who is battling addiction or has mental health issues or whatever it is, if they're sick, you name it, whatever it is that you are trying to, uh, you're just trying to love your kids and whatever it is that you're going through or whatever your children are going through. I just, I want to send you so much love and I just want to take a moment to just honor you and honor your journey and, and send love and prayers out to your children. When COVID hit, I, I haven't lost anyone that I love to COVID. So I, I don't know how that feels, but I do know that I've battled depression all my life and, um, went into a deep depression. I was in, in it, in de- a very deep state of depression. And, um, I was doing okay for a little while. I was kind of managing. But it came to a point where I wasn't, I wasn't managing it, managing my life very well anymore. And all areas of my life were suffering. And I've been there before, but this was different. So what I did was, um, I put a pause on trying to save my daughter's life and trying to get her into therapy and trying to get her resources and trying to help her and all those things that I was trying to do so desperately. I stopped. Everything had to just stop and I needed, I needed help. And so uh, through the grace of God, I found a therapist, my first try that was like, she was, she's just perfect for me. And I've been seeing her. We do the telehealth. So I have a video call with her every week. I think we've missed two sessions. So every week we've been seeing each other since I want to say June, give or take. And, um, it's been life changing for me. I'm not saying it's been easy. It's been slow and steady and I have to have a full block box of Kleenex (laughs) for these sessions with her because no matter how, no matter what's going on before this call and how busy or whatever with work and stuff like that, we get to work and, um, it's, it's an incredible journey and I just feel incredibly thankful and lucky to have her with me on this journey. And, um, she just honors and respects the process and, um, I feel seen and heard and it just feels safe and I love it. Anyways, I didn't mean to go into all that, but there you have it. That's a quick update on me. Um, as far as my daughter goes, she, I am learning how to support her adult journey in life with healthy boundaries. And it's not easy, but it is everything. And so she is living on her own. She has Rosie with her. So I don't know if I've mentioned that I have two puppies. Well, I used to have two puppies, Rosie and Ralphie. And so Ralphie is staying with us and Rosie is staying with her and she's doing her work and she's doing what she needs to do. And I am staying on my side of the net, as Jessica Butts would say, (laughs) you know, and also 
I've learned that I'm not codependent. (laughs) You know, we need to talk about that because I hear a lot of the enabling and the codependency and the language that is really built into conversations with the professionals and, you know, the experts in recovery and, and, um, and whether they realize it or not, there is so much blaming going on. We as mothers, we really, we carry, we carry a lot of responsibility and, um, and that's not so good when it comes to teaching our kids how to live their own lives. And, you know, boy, I sure didn't mean for any of this to happen. And if I could change it, I would. And if I could go back and change one thing, I, I know what it would be. And let me just pause there. I was so honored to be able to talk to a mom recently. We spent about two hours on the phone together and really my goal in talking to her was just to provide her with a safe space where she could just say whatever and just learn how to find our words, right? And learn how to talk about this because it's it's not something that we know how to do. And so she and I spent about two hours on the phone together. And um, I'm so grateful and blessed that I got to be there for her. We're in different parts of our kids' journeys with drugs and addiction, but it's very familiar, right? So when I talk to moms who have a loved one that's battling addiction, it just feels familiar. So one of the things that she asked me, and I've heard this before from other moms that I've talked to, is what advice, you know, would I give to moms who are going through what she's going through, what I've been through, um, what I am still going through. Okay. Um, what advice would I give? And I guess a couple things that I had said about this would be one, everybody's going to have an opinion about what you should or shouldn't be doing, what your kids should or shouldn't be doing, um, what you're doing right and wrong as a parent. There's no one path. The journey is going to look different for everyone. It's not linear. It's not, it's, it's built in with so many twists and turns and landmines and um, surprises and, and gifts and blessings if you're willing to look for them. And it's different for everyone. So really, at the end of the day, we want so badly for somebody to just tell us what to do to fix it. And it's not, it's not, it doesn't happen like that. It just doesn't. I wish it did. I tried that, you know. And if you've got folks in the industry telling you, do this, do that, this is what you need to do and everything's going to be okay, then maybe that's not the best person you should be talking to. I don't know. My experience is I've tried many different things and um, and everybody's journey is going to be a little bit different. So that's the first thing is that, you know, at the end of the day, you have to decide if the decisions that you're making, if you can live with them, weigh them out, look at, you know, all angles. And also our addicts are in, are in a hurry. They're in a hurry. They're, everything is urgent and needs to happen now. You don't have to follow um, their timeline. Okay. It's okay. It's perfectly okay to ask for space, to process, to think about what's going on and to give that to yourself and come back when you're ready. The harder they push, the more it makes sense to, to pause and slow down because usually it's the addiction that's talking. So that was the first thing. And the second thing I wanted to say when she asked me about advice was if I could go back and do one thing different, it would be to recognize my own, my own work that needed to be done. And it's been, it's been life changing. So I'm slow to the therapy game. I've always supported everybody else doing what they needed to do. It took me getting to a very, very dark place for me to reach out and find a therapist and, and start that work. And um, it's the best thing I could have done for myself. I wish I could have done that sooner. I wish I could have learned how to love and support and honor myself through this process of life 
Maybe I could have been a better mom to her. You know, and I don't even know that that's true. Like one thing that my therapist is helping me to see is that when I talk like that, she'll be like, what if, what if you have been doing the very best that you can? And I would ask that to you right now, who is ever listening to my voice. When you hear that, that voice coming into your head that, that blames yourself for what your child is going through. God, that's so painful. It's so painful and it's hard for me to even really get close enough to it to really talk about it because it hurts. But I would say that if, if you're in that place right now, if you're not right now, you have been, or you will be in a place of just wishing you could have done, what could you have done differently? You know, wishing you could have done things differently to spare your child this pain I want to ask you what my beautiful therapist says to me sometimes. What if you've been doing the best that you can? What if you have been the very best mom that you could be? And and what if that's enough? What if... You have been the best mom you could be. And knowing that, God, we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Like, you're going to fuck up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you screwed up sometimes. God knows I did. I, I continue to make mistakes. It's super annoying. And when it's something about, you know, the health and well being and, and the supporting of our kids, Oh, we take this serious, don't we? You know, we screw up. But there comes a point in time when that is no longer what they do with the information is up to them. That doesn't mean that you don't support them. That doesn't mean that you don't love them and want the best for them and that you're not going to interject and you're not going to share how you feel and your opinions on things, but you're going to relearn how to be this is where I go, okay, I'm going to stop because this is where I start to talk like I know what the hell I'm doing. And that is really irritating to me. All I can do is talk to you about my experience and what has worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. And the area of neglect in my life has been therapy. And this is something I just discovered last year because of COVID, because I was full on in a dark place. and. Time and time again, I would find myself just suffering, suffering for my daughter. That's not fair to anyone. It's not fair to my husband. It's not fair to my daughter. It's not fair to my beautiful son, my stepson. It's not fair to the people, the friends that love me and the people that I work with. Um, And so once I found myself in that place, and it didn't take very long, guys. So we started working remotely full time in March. And within a few months, it happened that quick. I needed help. I was in it. I was so aware that I was in a state of depression and that it was scaring me. And I got help. And thank God, thank God that, that, which, she, she's perfect for me and she came right on time and, um, and I'm just blessed. So I guess I just wanted to share those thoughts with you. Um, I'm really learning how through therapy, learning not to edit myself, edit my voice, which this just, you know, I'm learning so much about myself and it's a beautiful journey and it's hard. Oh, it's hard. Every week I cry and I hurt and I, I, my voice tightens up. My, I mean, my throat closes and I, I have trouble speaking and I feel sick to my stomach sometimes and my chest feels so heavy. And sometimes what she does is she realizes she'll, she'll ask me if I need, need a moment to just breathe or do we need to meditate together or whatever. And it's so beautiful. And I just feel super, super lucky for her. 
The other thing I wanted to do is to tell you, I did want to read something to you. So it's very interesting. I've always been a writer and I find things that I've written buried, you know, like I'll find something really special that I've written and it'll be tucked away between like notes from work or whatever, you know, or buried in boxes and I've got notebooks and there's no organized process to this. It's just, there are times when I feel really, really lucky that I understand that I need to grab a pen and some paper and I need to, to write. Recently, I was looking for something. I was going through some an old notebook. And I was looking for something having to do with things that I'd written down about my podcast and about my mission for the podcast and why I started it three years ago, now almost four years ago. And, um, and I found it was like, I have these moments where I feel like I'm searching for something. And, um, what I found was this poem that I wrote. I didn't even know it was a poem. Somebody else called it a poem. And I was like, well, I guess it is. I remember vaguely writing it to myself and it was one of those moments where pen to paper and I couldn't stop writing. It just came out of me without edits. It's just like, just couldn't, I couldn't get it out fast enough. And it was one of those things where I wrote it, closed it up, put it away and never read it again. And that was probably oof, at least two years ago that I wrote this. But when I found it not that long ago, it was in December. I see the date here in my blog, December 14th, that I posted it. When I found this, I stopped searching that day. And this was what I was, I think this was one of those God winks where I was led to find this and it was for me. And it was, and it resonated with me and I cried and I felt connected to it. And, um, it was such a gift. I don't know if that sounds silly, but that's okay. That's the way I see it. So I just wanted to share it with you today and then I'll let you go. And if you're still listening to me, thank you. Thanks for still listening. (laughs) I appreciate you. Okay. It's called, I've been waiting for you. It says, it seems like years. Take a moment and breathe. Feel your feet on the ground. The earth can hold you now. Your work is done. Let your eyelids rest and just breathe. Did you notice? You're still here. You're still breathing. Your heart still beats. Open your eyes now. Look around you. Do things seem different? That's because you're different. The sun seems to shine brighter. The butterflies come out to greet you and birds fly by to say hello. Did you feel that gentle breeze in your hair? That was for you. Breathe. You've been working so hard. Now you can just be still. It's time to love yourself. It's time to allow hope to re-enter your life. It's about you now. Your work is done. Don't they have everything they need? You've been given another chance. Take in the oxygen, then set your voice and your words free. From this day forward, you will no longer hold yourself responsible for the happiness of others. It's time for you to live renewed. That's it. I'm sending you so, so much love and thank you for being here for me and with me today. And, um, I, I did find out that my email that I've been giving out all these years does not work. <laughs> so if you've been emailing me at Shar at Beyond Hope, Beyond Hope Radio, I tested that recently because I'm like, nobody ever emails me. <laughs> and I don't know where that email goes, but it sure didn't come to me. So if you want to reach me, you can find me at Charlene J at gmail.com. And that's, excuse me, that's S H A R L Y N E J at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. And I'm sending you so, so much love. And we got this. Hang in there. Just sending you love and blessings today. What are you going to do for yourself today? How are you going to love yourself? I'll talk to you soon. Hey 
everyone. Thank you so, so much for tuning in and for helping me to connect with other moms of addicts or loved ones who are struggling with addiction in their lives. If you have questions for me, comments, suggestions on future show content, or perhaps there's a topic, a specific topic that you would like to hear from an expert in the field, I would love to hear from you. I am also interested in sharing your voice. So if you have messages of hope or personal stories that you think would resonate with our listeners, please send me an email. You can type me out a message or you can include an attachment um, to an audio clip with your voice. You can send that to Shar at beyondhoperadio.com. And with that, thank you again. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Beyond Hope. For show notes and more, head on over to beyondhoperadio.com. A huge thank you to recoveryinnovators.com and James Healy. Thank you so much for putting up with me (laughs) and for helping me to um, produce and launch the show. I couldn't have done it without you. You are so awesome. And to anybody else who has been considering uh, working with James, highly recommend him. Please go over to his website and check it out, recoveryinnovators.com.